Hi, I'm Shamal Lane for TwoPeasInABucket.com and I'm here with the July edition of 4x6 Photo Love. Since it's the seventh month of the year, that means we're going to scrapbook seven 4x6 photos. And this month's design principle includes an accordion fold element. So there's two photos that are visible when we first look at the page, but then one of the photos opens up to reveal uh, the additional photos and a journaling card. So there's a total of seven photos there on the layout. This first example uses some background paper from My Mind's Eye, the Good Day Sunshine collection, but then it's several different paper collections. So there's Girls Papery, Bella Boulevard, Basic Gray, and then the letter stickers are from American Crafts. And I'm going to walk you through a second version of this layout using papers from Echo Park and Pebbles, and they're going to be in pinks and blues with some black cardstock for a bit of contrast. So if you want to grab seven 4x6 photos, you can join me and make the layout along with me. If you would like measurements to make sure everything um, fits together correctly on your accordion, make sure you go to twopeasinabucket.com and download the PDF, which has a diagram and uh, all the measurements written out for you. And then I'll walk you through the whole process here on the video. So I'd love for you to join Here's me. Here's a look at the first layout that I've created, and it starts with just two photos on display and then this one opens like an accordion with three additional photos on that side plus a journaling card and then two more photos there on the back and what we will put this in a page protector I'll show you that right at the end of the video and um, but the page protector essentially you're just going to cut a little window so that it will um, lay over the top of this but you'll still be able to open it Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create another layout that's pretty much exactly the same, uh, just different papers, and, and this embellishment will be a little bit different. Um, we're going to use seven all portrait shots. There is an option with landscape shots with the other direction, um, and that's being shown by our guest artist this month, that's Julie Kirk. So do make sure you go ahead and look at the class page on two piece so you'll be able to see both options. But let's go ahead and get started with another version of this page. So I'm starting with a background sheet of, of patterned paper or you could use solid cardstock. This is just a very light blue with a white dot which is from Echo Park and their springtime collection. And then I've just cut a few different pieces here. I have a large box from the pink patterned paper. This one's from Pebbles. I have then a piece, this box is going to be smaller but wider. And then I also have two strips of a brighter color. One that's just ever so wider than this piece. So we've got, this is most narrow, a little bit wider, a little bit wider still. And this one is the full 12 inches. It goes right across the top. Then there's a smaller tab. It's just left over. It's actually this piece right here. And it's going to go up here. If you want measurements for all these and you want to do them exactly the same that I did, you can use the PDF at two peas and it'll tell you exactly what I cut all these pieces to. But if you prefer, I don't really scrapbook, scrapbook with measurements, so I'm just showing you how I would do it where I would just make one box um, to start with and then I would make things wider or narrower depending on, um, on the space. So this is the, um, the starting point with the patterned papers. I've inked all my edges in black on this layout since I'm going to use black cardstock as the accent. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere all of these pretty much in this position. base of the layout with the pattern paper. Now I'm going to set this aside to work on the accordion pieces and for that you're going to need two sheets of the same color of cardstock. And you're also going to need a way to fold or score the paper and I'm going to use a, a small trimmer and you can get a scoring blade that puts in that just um, fits into your trimmer, but I'm just going to use a stylus and then use this track, and I find that works just as easy and I tend not to lose the stylus 
instead of this scoring blade, which I'm always forgetting where I put it. So um, we're going to go ahead and make the accordion. Now, our photos are four by six. So the first thing we want to do is create a mat that's going to go all the way across here. And we're going to need two of those because they're going to fit together to become that longer folded piece. Now I can't just do two pieces because this is going to be ever, this paper is going to be ever so slightly bigger than six inches since it's going to be bigger than the four by six photo, which means this second piece isn't going to be wide enough. It's going to be ever so slightly smaller. So that's why I need two pieces of cardstock. So then I want to make sure that I get these two pieces cut exactly the same. So I'll line them up. And I'll cut this on the trimmer as well. So now I have the two pieces that are exactly the same and I want to make sure that I keep these separate from the two that are smaller. And we're going to start creating the folds. So what I want to do is use my photo as a guide and I'm looking to get that evenly spaced and it's like I was going to cut here but instead of cutting, I'm going to score the paper. So I close it just the same as I would, and then I either use a scoring blade or a stylus to make a crease in that same spot. So then that piece will fold. Then I want to do the same thing one more time. So I use the photo as a measurement. Get it in just the right place, and then again, score on this line. Now, this piece is going to be the piece that's left over here is going to be smaller than four by six, but we're not going to trim it. We're going to leave it as it is, and it will come in useful in just a moment. We need to repeat this same thing with the second piece of paper. So now we have two pieces that have two full blocks and one partial block. Okay? So I'm going to choose which photos will be the two that are on display from the beginning and then the stack of the remaining five that will be hidden away in that accordion. So I've taken my seven and I've um, decided which two will be at the, at the top of the stack. And then behind this one I have the other five photos that I'm going to include. And now we need to, we can put this one aside, that one's just going to be flat on the layout. We can put that aside for the moment. And we need to put these pieces together. We want this piece to open this direction so that the, um, the open edge is toward the middle of the page. The folded piece here is on the outside. But when we get to this empty piece, or the, it's not empty, it's a, the, the smaller partial piece, we need to make that into a whole piece. So you're going to take this smaller piece there and line it up with the whole piece from the other one and go ahead and attach those two. So now, this is going to fold up like this. So I have one photo on display, and I have all this room to work with. So I'm keeping this, this free edge toward the center of the layout, and I'm going to be adding the five photos plus a 4x6 journaling card, or if you have a lighter color cardstock, you could just leave it plain and write straight onto the cardstock, however you want to decorate that extra block. But just keep in mind you're going to have one more block here than you have photos, because that one's for your journaling. So I'm going to go ahead and start attaching my pictures. So end up with your photo opening up so that you have two more photos on this side, three, three photos here plus this empty space 
for your journaling card, or you can pick any of the spaces for your journaling card, of course. And then that leaves you with this odd-shaped piece here at the end. Now that's what you're going to need when it comes to matting this photo, but of course now there's a little bit short. So what we're going to do is go back to that other sheet of black cardstock, which wasn't quite big this way, but it will be big enough this way. And you're going to cut a mat that will fit here with this photo on top. And that way, even though this part has the extra tension of, of coming out of the page protector, and this, the fact that this is going to have a layer over the top, and this whole piece will be adhered and then has another mat and a photo over the top, will keep this piece nice and secure, um, and it will be attached all the way across the back there. So the next piece you want to cut is your mat that will go right across here that again will be just bigger than 4 by 6 so you're going to cut along this side here and here. So this mat fits the photo but also fits right along here and we're going to go ahead and attach this whole piece here to the layout and then attach this over the top with the photo as well so the photos will end up lined up it's just that this one has a big stack underneath There we go. So that's the photos taken care of. This piece is going to open out in both directions. We've got a card to journal here, and that means now it's time for some embellishment and a title. So to add some embellishment, I'm going to use some tags by American Crafts. These are from the Love Collection, and I've chosen one blue and two different pinks from there. And then I've punched some butterflies. This is the new larger size in the Martha Stewart Butterfly Punch. You can punch it anywhere on the page. It looks like this. And it comes apart so that you can punch anywhere on the paper. And then it just snaps together. It's very easy to, um, to punch through. So um, if you like the butterfly, that's a, a new one to add to your collection. So I've punched three of those in black and white polka dots. And I've gone ahead and put these two together. And I'll just show you that with the third one. It's very, very simple embellishment. So I'm just taking the butterfly punch and I've inked the edges in black. I'm taking a foam square, put that in the center behind the butterfly. And then what I want to do is line the butterfly up so it's central with the, the hole at the top of the tag. And then move it to the point where the edges of the wings are at the edge of the metal frame and press it down. And then I've added a word sticker across the top. I have this sheet from Authentique. And I'm going to use, I've used um, just a single word here, and I'm going to use a series of words. So I want to go ahead and, and put it into place before I put the words over the top. I'm also going to use a sticker just behind one of these. This is from the Ditto Collection by Hampton Arts. And it comes with three sheets like this, but I've just cut one out so that I can move it around on the page before I peel the, the sticker off. So I can make sure I get it in just the right spot. And what I want to do is add it just around here. If there was something in the photo that I wanted to see, then I would put it underneath. But since this is kind of an empty space in the picture, I'm going to go ahead and put it right over the top. I think I want it to overlap that little border at the bottom. There we go. So press that into place. And then this butterfly is going to go right in the center there. Now, the other two, one's going to go up here, and it's actually going to go right at the top of the page, and I'm just going to use my scissors to cut the top of this um, 
the top of the tag off so it will be just straight across the top. You can cut these with scissors, just don't use your very best detail scissors. You want to use something that's a little strong and you don't want to um, ruin the, the blade on your, your really good detailed paper scissors. And this one's going to come down here and the title's going to go right across the bottom. For the title, I'm going to use two different kinds of stickers. I'm using some gray foam thickers from American Crafts and some hot pink flat letter stickers and from Sassafras. These are called Pink Swirl. So here's everything mostly finished. I've attached um, the rest of the title and just added a, a word sticker below which is from um, the Girls Papery Jubilee collection and another one of those stickers from the same sheet just up here just to add a little bit of um, softness and went ahead and put the, the word stickers across this butterfly and then if you would like, you don't have to do this, but you can add something that looks like a little tab on the accordion so that it's obvious that there's more to this so that it kind of encourages whoever's looking at your album to open it up. So I just took a tiny little square left of the pink heart paper, added another word sticker and a tiny little butterfly. On the other page I stapled a little loop of thread. Um, so you can just put whatever you would like on that tab and then I filled in my journaling card inside. And my last little thing is I want to add a little bit of sparkle to this. So I'm going to cover up my and um, my photos with some scrap paper. And then I'm going to use some light chalkboard mist and spray just over a few different places on the page. Move this and spray up here. This one isn't completely opaque, it's a little bit opaque, so um, you can still see everything and it's not going to produce lots of white on the page, but it does produce a nice pearl sparkle. I don't know if you can see there or not, but in real life it does have a nice little sparkle to it. And then the last thing to do is to adapt the page protector to hold the layout. So I'll just walk you through that. For this you're going to need the layout that you've created, plus the page protector you're going to use to hold the layout, and then a spare sheet of just chipboard or cardboard or whatever you have that you can put inside so that you'll be able to cut the page protector without cutting through both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting the layout in the page protector. If you know where this is going to go in your album, you may want to have a look and see if it needs to be on this side or this side. Um, and in this particular case, it's going to go this way. So go ahead and put the layout inside the page protector. And make sure everything is sitting the way you want it. And then we're going to take a stylus or you can use a, a blunt pencil or something that's going to make an indentation on the page protector. And we want to mark three sides of this accordion. And we want to mark the side that it opens from here. So we want the top, this inside piece, and the side. Or this top, sorry. Top, bottom, side. That wasn't very clear there. So you're just going to use the stylus to draw around it. It's okay if it's not completely perfect. And that's going to leave a little dent all the way around that spot. I'm going to take the layout out and put the chipboard inside. And then use a craft knife or your scissors to cut this line. And you can use a ruler if that helps you put it into place. I'm just better with the edge of my scissors than I am with a craft knife as long as I go slow.
Okay, so that leaves us with this piece that opens. Go ahead and take the chipboard or the, the spare piece out. Put the layout back in. And this time you'll have to be quite careful when you put the layout in because you've got this extra piece. You just hold it up. Makes it a little bit easier. And now when you get to this spot in the in your album, that piece is just going to open so that you can use you can see the whole accordion. And then when you put it away, you close it back up over the top, and that will keep it generally safe while it's in your album, but will still allow you to get to the rest of the photos. So there are this month's examples, one in pink and blue with seven photos, and then one in a brighter, more varied colored scheme with lots of yellow. Then also have a look at the website where you'll see an example with photos in a landscape orientation and a PDF that has all the um, dimensions of all these pieces that you can just cut them out to fit the measurements if you'd prefer it that way. You have a month to join us in the challenge and win some prizes perhaps. So I hope you'll stop by and join us and thanks very much for watching.